video, we're going to go ahead and lay out a part. And it's a part we created in Bobcad in a previous video. So uh, we should have a blank screen uh, in Sheet Cam right now. So the first thing we're going to do is go to File. We're going to say Import Drawing. And now we want to navigate uh, to that uh, to that file that we created. So uh, I believe it was part three, I think, is what I named it. So this is the Drawing Options dialog box. We want to scale to the inch. We want our drawing position to be lower left, which will put it right down here. Okay, upper right would put it at the upper, uh, or upper left would put it at the upper left part of the screen. If we select Drawing Origin, it's going to put it at the origin that it was drawn at, which can be handy on some uh, on some drawings, but most of the time we want to have it selected to lower left. Go ahead and click OK. So this is the part, and if you followed along on the Bobcat videos, you may recognize it. Uh, so you notice that uh, if we go ahead and select the S button at the top, you notice that these two holes are yellow. Well, that's because everything is on a single layer. Look over here on the Layers palette. Everything is on a single layer. So Sheet Cam automatically recognizes inside contours. So the yellow is telling us that Sheet Cam sees these as an inside contour, and it sees this red as an outer contour, outside contour. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the we need to create an operation on this. Uh, if we post-process it right now, we're not going to get anything. Uh, we'll get a header and a footer, uh, which won't uh, actually be a valid part. So to create an operation, we're going to go to the Operations window. We're going to click on this button that looks like a matchstick. Okay, and then we're going to go through all this. So we're going to start right at the top, and we're going to select an outside offset which will put the out, an out, outside offset here. And we're going to let Sheet Cam figure out the inside offset on this all by itself. So the layer, we have to select the layer, even though there's only one. And the tool. So the tool is going to be based on the thickness metal, uh, the tip you're cutting with, the current you're cutting with. Uh, we're going to say uh, we're cutting this out of 12 gauge at 45 amps. We're going to use a 0.05 curve. Now your feed rate should always be zero in Sheet Cam. We set the feed rate out on the machine. So your feed rate is always zero. Don't change it. It's always zero. It has to be zero. Max chain length is always going to be zero. Uh, overcut depends on uh, what you're actually cutting. So most of the time it's going to be zero. Actually, in this case, I'm going to use some overcut. We'll demonstrate what that does. I'm going to put an overcut of 0.25. And uh, reverse cut direction should always be checked. Offset open paths should never be checked. And lead-ins on open paths should never be checked. Uh, now for lead-in, we have a couple of options for lead-ins and lead-outs. Uh, none would, of course, means no lead. Uh, an arc lead, let's do that first. So an arc lead is going to be, a, we'll do a 0.25 arc lead in. And uh, on your lead out, we always want to use a lead out. And your lead out wants to be the same as your curve width. So we're going to say 0 0.05 on that. I'm going to click OK. OK, so now... <coughs> You notice the lead, and uh, since that lead's following my mouse, we'll talk about that. Uh, when I have the Edit Start Points uh, button selected, my uh, when I move my mouse around the outer edge or around a toolpath, you see the lead follows the mouse. Well, when we get that lead where we want it, we can just click, and it moves that lead point right to that spot. Now, quarter inches is, is a fairly small lead for this part, but uh, if we zoom in real tight, and I don't want that lead to follow anymore, so I'm going to switch over to uh, view the toolpath. 
So this is our lead in. So we're going to start here and we're going to go all the way down here, all the way around. We're going to come back around and this is that overburn we put in. So this is actually our start point where the S is. This is our end point and this is our overburn between this point here and this point here is our overburn which we had set at a quarter of an inch. Now if we take that overburn out We'll set that to zero. You'll see that that uh, lead out uh, shortens up and comes right in uh, at the start point. So we're going to put that back in. Now you notice how this is yellow and we have a flag up here. So uh, this is telling us here we have we have an open path. And it's telling us that open paths were not offset. So uh, what that is basically is that's a that's a problem or, or an error in the drawing. Okay, and it, it probably is right here because we have an extra start point right here where this S4 is that shouldn't be there. So we probably have something going on right here. We probably have an overlapping line or something like that. So before we continue with this, we probably should uh, actually go in and fix that. Okay, so here we have our part open in Bobcat. And we're going to look for this, this problem. So uh, if we remember, we go back here. We had an extra start point. Uh, right up in here at uh, S4. If we zoom in really tight, uh, we can actually see that there's a little line right here. Okay, so we need to get rid of that. And uh, we didn't catch that when we created the part, but we can get rid of it now. So uh, we're going to go back to Bobcad. Zoom in nice and tight. And sure enough, there's the line. So we're going to go ahead and select that line. And... Uh, Hit delete, and we're going to say file, save as. We're going to save that back out as a DXF file. Okay, so now we're back here in Sheet Cam, and we've, we've fixed the file in Bobcat. So we're going to go up here to the file menu. We're going to say file and import drawing once again. And now we're going to select that same part, part 3. And again, we have the same dialog, so just hit OK. OK, now you can see that this, this start point went away. And that's because we got rid of that little line up there that shouldn't have been there. So this is good to go now. And now uh, we could actually hit Post, the Post Processor button right here, and go ahead and post this file. And we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to say, uh, hit the Post Processor. We hit Save. And this is our G code. And this now would, uh, you would open this file in MONT3. And uh, we told SheetCam to save this in our G code directory on the desktop. So you would go to MONT3, go to load G code, and load this up. Uh, now we're going to uh, modify these leads just a little bit. So we're going to go in and we're going to make the leads a little bit bigger. So let's. Uh, Let's try a perpendicular lead. And we'll do a perpendicular lead out. Okay, so a perpendicular lead is going to be a straight in lead, 90 degrees. It leads in straight, and then it leads out straight. Uh, I prefer to use an arc lead out with a perpendicular lead on holes, but I like uh, on a uh, on edge like this on the outside, I still want to arc lead. But uh, since everything's on the same layer and sheet cam works with layers, I can't change this without changing these uh, using this dialog box. I can uh, in another way. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click OK and get out of this. I like this lead for this for these holes, but I don't like it for this right here. So we're going to highlight the uh, S button for edit start points. And uh, so we have our edit start points 
uh, selected now and you see the lead following your mouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that lead. We're going to say properties and uh, we're going to uncheck this right here, use operation lead in lead out. And I'm going to define a separate lead just for this one lead in. So we want to tell it to use an arc lead in, an arc lead out, but I'm going to make it larger. I want to use a 0.75 inch lead. And then we can go ahead and move that to where it makes sense. Just like that. Okay, now I like that a lot better. Uh, so that that's a part I would I would send to the machine and cut. So we could either hit the post processor again and uh, go ahead and post it out or we can go ahead and make more of them. So to make more of them or to move it around the screen we're going to go into nesting. So in nesting I click on the part and I can move it about. Okay, if I want to rotate it, I go down to the bottom of the screen where it says A and I type in an angle. We rotate it 90 degrees, 45 degrees. We're going to leave it at zero. <coughs> now if I want to create more of these, I can right click on the part while in nesting and I'm going to say duplicate. Now you notice when I duplicate it, it duplicates the toolpath right along with it. So I don't need to go and put a toolpath on every single one. I can simply duplicate the part and it duplicates the toolpath just like that. Okay, and I don't need to do it one at a time. I can actually select those three. I say duplicate and it duplicates the three of them. Okay, so let's get let's back out of that. Now let's say I want to create a whole sheet of these. I want to just fill this whole sheet with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Again, we're in we're still in nesting mode. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say array parts. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give it a part spacing down here of a quarter inch. It'll be a quarter inch in the X, quarter inch in the Y. We're going to say fit to material. And this is where changing your material size can come in handy. If you have a remnant that you'd like to uh, fit some of these on, just enter your sheet size up here in the job options and uh, it'll actually fit it to that sheet. On a full sheet, we're going to get five columns, 12 rows. So we can go ahead and hit OK and it goes ahead and fills that sheet up. Now, it doesn't leave any leeway on the edge. So before you actually post this job, it's always a good idea to select them all and just kind of move them away from the edge like that. And that's going to give you a little leeway. Now, when you zero the machine, you can zero the torch right to the edge of the material and you'll have that little bit of leeway from the edge. Uh, and now if, uh, if that looks good, then you would just hit the post process button and uh, post that job out and open it up in SheetCamp.